You are certainly aware of the fact that the HD6450 is far away from a gaming GPU, and it was certainly never promoted as such. Sadly, many people unknowingly bought one back in the day, due to a lack of proper tech knowledge, and ended up with something like this. A really slow, and quite frankly, an awful GPU for anything that released even at the time this card was new. But can the 6450 be a suitable GPU for the 2000 classics, that once required top-of-the-line GPUs to run at decent quality settings? Well, let's try to answer that with the following benchmarks. Starting things off with a surprise, in form of Fable running at 1080p with the slider set to somewhere in the middle, giving in return a more than excellent result of over 60 FPS on average. The 6450 is starting out strong, let's see if it can maintain this throughout the benchmarks. Well, it was great while it lasted. The 6450 really struggles with Call of Duty 2, I'm not quite sure why. I remember testing the GT210, and it gave over 100 FPS at maximum settings with the same resolution. The 6450 offers a terrible experience to say the least, dropping below 30 FPS when the action really heats up. Another really surprising result came with GTA San Andreas, with the frame rate all over the place, no matter which setting you choose, and locking the FPS doesn't help that much, since it does drop below 30 FPS in many instances. A quick look at the frame time graph also tells a lot about the frame rate. This is just not a good experience in my opinion. Switching to one of the most demanding games of today's benchmark list, and the 6450 not only ran it at the maximum settings, it delivered averages that are smooth and honestly unexpected considering the results so far. It seems like the performance depends quite a lot on the game we are testing, and not so much of the power of the 6450. The original Assassin's Creed certainly wasn't an easy game to run back in 2007, and the 6450 obviously agrees. Higher settings than this may be possible, as the frame rate tends to drop when there is a lot going on on screen, 720p with every setting turned all the way down is the best way to go here, just to make sure it runs stable enough. So the 6450 has proven to run some of the games exceptionally well, though many did struggle a lot, no matter the settings used. In my opinion, you can use the 6450 for all the games, but it's gonna be a hit or miss depending on the game. Considering I have got my 6450 for free, it can be put into good use, although a proper retro flagship like the 3850 might be a much better choice. This concludes this small experimental video. All in all, if you get a 6450 for next to nothing, you now know that it is capable of running retro games relatively well. Just don't pay the crazy prices some people are asking for it. They are definitely not worth it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you in my next video as well.